I changed the batteries and a Xantrex X Power Power Source 1800. Several companies sold the same unit. They're all made by Xantrex Duracell, Noma. Mine was a Noma Backup Power System 1800 made and supported by Xantrex, and I called Xantrex about changing the batteries. I bought three of this battery, a 12 volt, 20 amp hour from CSB. Xantrex says that changing the batteries is not recommended, that it should be done by one of their technicians. I decided to give it a go. He told me that it's a little bit complicated. They've done it, but they have no instructions on how to do it. These are the tools that I use to do the job. An eight millimeter socket on a ratchet handle. All the bolts and screws that I encountered were Phillips. I used the, the small screwdriver quite a bit. The orange and black I used quite a bit. The yellow and black one, the largest one, I really didn't need. It's optional. And the last tool is a magnet on an extending wand. That's for the pieces that you drop inside while you're working. Handy thing to have. Here's a top-down view of the machine and the three new batteries that are going into it. It helps to orient yourself because they don't tell you anything about how it's assembled and where everything is. As I break it down, I'll show you the different parts. But the top with the control panel is not, it's only held in place by the two side panels. First thing we take off is at least one side panel. I took both of them off, it made it easier. In this picture, the cord starts in the back of the machine, which is where you have four outlets and a light to see the outlets and a power failure. The front panel is, you can see the split between the the top panel and the front panel. Front panel does not have to come off. It can make some things easier, but you cannot get the batteries out through the front because there are electronics in there that block, block the access. So two side panels, they come off easily, four bolts each. The top panel lifts off. It's not held in place by anything, but uh, one component, which is the control panel. I'll show you later how to unscrew that. The side panels hold it all in place. The side panels determine or define the whether you've got the front and back panels located properly because they're adjustable. You can you could have a big gap if you wanted, but you wouldn't fit your side panel on. So as it comes apart, you'll see all this. You have to remove at least the left panel. I recommend taking them both off. Four screws hold each side panel in place one in each corner. They come off with the, the, the medium Phillips screwdriver. The small one would, would also have worked. That's pretty easy. And then you can see where things go and where you're going to go. With the side panel removed on the left side, you can see the batteries. You can see that you want to remove the top tray from the bottom tray. Uh, the metals are different. You can see a difference in the color of the metals. That's how I knew where to separate the top from the bottom. It would be extremely difficult to remove those batteries without taking the top tray out. So I learned that much. You can see how the front panel and the rear panel are mounted. You can see where you're going to have to unscrew to remove them or at least loosen them. The rear panel has to come off completely to make it easier to do the job. There is another way to do it. It's much easier. It's very quick to remove that rear panel. And it's a very fast to do that. Batteries that I bought and the batteries that were in the unit are lead, sealed lead acid with absorbed glass mat. So you can safely turn the unit over, the batteries will not spill or leak. And they shouldn't, unless they're defective. So I flipped it over onto the top so that I could loosen the bolts and screws on the bottom to remove or at least move out of the way 
the front panel and the rear panel. The wheels remain connected to the chassis. You don't have to touch the wheels, leave them there. So I, I loosened the screw, I removed the screws actually, and I, I identified all the screws, put them in little envelopes, where they came from, where they have to go back to, not a bad idea. And the front, I removed the feet. Uh, removing the feet is part of how it's fastened in place. Uh, just to move it out of the way, even if you don't remove it completely, having all of the front and the back loose came in very handy at different points, and you'll soon see why. So the three bolts there in the front and the two in the back came off, and the rear panel I took off completely, which is coming up soon. The panel and the rear panel each have two slots on each side. Each one of those slots is held in place by a threaded bolt. One is black on the bottom. The top one is a, is a chrome plated or a zinc plated. They're, they need to be loosened. I removed them. But you need to get the panels moved out of the way to get access to everything inside. Again, I removed the screws, put them in envelopes, identified where they came from and where they go. So the panels are adjustable. When you're taking it apart and putting it together, you can loosen them, separate them, adjust the space between the top and the front and the rear. Makes life easier for a technician. With the front and rear panels loosened, it's easy to remove the top. It lifts right out. Do it slowly because the control panel is connected by wiring into the tray, the top tray with all the electronics. I removed four screws, removed the acetate that on top of the control panel, removed the control panel, sat it onto the tray of components, put the acetate and screws back so that I wouldn't lose them, and that's pretty pretty quick and pretty straightforward. To gain access to the batteries, you're going to remove the rear panel and the top cage. Now is a good time to remove the rear panel. Two things prevent you from getting it far enough away to have a lot of room to work. Those two green wires held in place with a nut and bolt. I removed the nut and bolt, pulled out the wires, put the nut and bolt back into the right hole so I'd know where to put it all back. I did not snip the tie wrap on that white cluster of wires, but that would give you more space to pull, extend those wires longer to get the rear panel farther away from the insides where you're going to do a lot of work to get those batteries out. Having space there is really valuable. The top tray that's filled with electronics is sitting on a piece of foam that's sitting on top of the batteries. Removing that tray makes it easier to get at the batteries, do what you need to do, put the new batteries in. To do that, I looked at the difference in color between the chassis and the top tray. The metals are different. That let me identify four screws that hold the top tray in place. Three of them are top down. One of them is in from the side. You can they're easy to find, but then then they're they're uh, all in these pictures. Left the fans in place. It didn't interfere with anything I had to do. With the rear panel removed, you can see the black batteries held in place by a bracket, an inverted U held in the front and the back by two screws. Those screws are not so hard to remove, but they're very hard to get at. That's why I was happy to have removed the rear panel completely. This is looking top down from the left side at the front of the unit. With the battery still in place, because I haven't removed the front screws from the inverted U bracket that holds them in place, I'm using the orange and black long ha uh, with a long screwdriver. To loosen those screws, you can see there's not a whole lot of space to work here. So removing the tray, the more you remove the tray, the farther you pull the front panel out, 
the more room you have to work in here. And since you have to get back in here later to replace those screws, which is a lot more difficult, you might want to give yourself some space in here. I did it like this, but to put it all back together, I had to give myself more space. The screws have been removed that hold the bracket in place, but the bracket is being held there by the wiring harnesses, which I wanted to remove before I started to deal with removing the bracket, just for uh, to avoid electrical problems, shorting things, even on dead batteries. There could be condensers with power in them. And to have room to have room to move. So I decided at this point to remove the wires from the batteries. I use the eight millimeter socket wrench to loosen the terminal bolts, remove the wiring, put all the wiring aside. The black harness goes with a single loose black wire, which I tie wrapped temporarily together so that I would know to put it all back the way it came out. On the positive side, there's a white wire, single white wire that goes with the red harness. I twist tied those together to remind myself to put them back the way they came out. I lifted the bracket that holds the batteries out the top. I lifted the first of the three batteries, the rearmost battery, out the top. You could slide them out the back if you've given yourself enough room by pulling the back cover far enough away. Either one works very well. This battery is also 12 volt, 20 amp hours. Same specs as the ones I bought to put in it. The specs from Xantrex on their website state that it's a 51 amp hour battery, which is three 17 amp hour batteries, but there was a 20 amp hour battery at 320s in it. So it was 60 amp hours, even though the specs say it's 51. 20 amp hours is good, it gives you a little longer runtime. And this Antrex unit gives you good runtime. The next part was pretty straightforward removing the two other batteries, putting the new batteries where the old ones came out, replacing the clamp, and screwing the clamp down is. Uh, you'll need some room to move. I cut my finger on a piece of sharp edge metal. It's, it's a little bit tricky getting the, uh, the holes in the two pieces of metal aligned, getting the screw in and it's threaded properly. Uh, it's, that was the, one of the longest parts of the whole job. With the new batteries in place, I connected the wiring to the new batteries as they were in the old batteries. I put the foam back on top of the batteries, put the component tray back on top, and bolted it to the main frame. The first part I put back on is the top lid. I removed the screws and the acetate from the compartment for that, put the control panel back into its slot. It rests in place more or less. doesn't lock in, but it stays there. Put the acetate back over, tighten the screws, sat the lid on to where it belongs on the component cage, and it stays pretty much where it belongs. The front and rear panels align it a little better, and the side panels lock it all in place. The next thing to put on are the front and rear panels. I put the rear panel on first, uh, put the green, the two green wires back on the nut and bolt that holds them on, slide it into place, start to half tighten all the screws and bolts that hold it in place because you're going to adjust. You have to get the front panel, rear panel, and top pretty much aligned the way they go so that it all fits together before you tighten them down. It's not, it's just a bit of fidgeting, it's not that complicated. And some of the fasteners are on the bottom, so you've got to tip it over and have it all held together at the same time. So it's just time consuming and tedious. 
not such a big deal. And after that, once everything's in place, you can tighten it down. The last things to put on are the two side panels, four bolts each, hold them in place. When you can get the side panels screwed on in the right place, you have properly aligned the front panel, top panel, and rear panel, and you're ready to go. After that, I plugged it in and tested it. It started charging. It, it operated a lamp that I plugged into the outlets. The blue light works in the back. All the controls work the way they say in the manual, which is not what this is about. So, good luck.